Happy Tuesday morning out there, all my winners. Hope everybody's doing great. I hope you had a good Monday to start off your week. We sure did. We had the St. Louis Cardinals, the comeback Cardinals, 8-6 to yesterday. Uh, They come back and get the Nationals, so that's three out of the last four games we've been able to put up the dub. Wake Forest wheels back in the College World Series, 3-2 to over LSU. Just an amazing game. And you got to think, for Wake Forest, what's it going to take to knock them out? I mean, LSU had them. Uh, you know, they, they've been on the ropes a little bit, but they found a way to keep winning and advancing. So interesting to see how that goes. Tennessee going into yesterday against Stanford still had their three aces, uh, that they hadn't thrown. They were able to come back and beat Stanford. Stanford hopped up on them for nothing. Uh, Tennessee finishes them off eight to six, uh, for the college world series. Uh, I'd like to thank our sponsors, the Believe Network, also Bet Online Sports. Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchups reports for your baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available right from the comfort of your own home. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use that promo code Believe. That's capital B. L-E-A-V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. All right, so uh, a couple things. Uh, We talked on the College World Series and uh, where that stands and what it looks like. As far as going into today uh, for the College World Series, you're going to have Two or one game at two o'clock. Uh, Oral Roberts TCU. This is an elimination game. TCU laying a dollar eighty plus one thirty five on the comeback for uh, Oral Roberts. And then at seven o'clock, there's no line out yet, but you'll have LSU playing uh, Tennessee. Uh, LSU beat Tennessee the first time. I like Tennessee in this spot. It's an el- elimination game. I think Tennessee wheels back around and gets them here. Uh, so I, I don't know what that line is yet uh, here on the overnight, but I like Oral Roberts uh, at plus money, and I like Tennessee. Those are my leans today. MLB yesterday, again, we had the comeback Cardinals 8-6. to six. Marlins absolutely shoot down the Blue Jays 11 to nothing. The Marlins are just, they continue to be an incredible story. Uh, Tigers beat the Royals 6-4. to four. I think that makes Lyles 0-12. That guy blows. Uh, Cubs, 8-0 over the Pirates. The Reds, they continue their winning streak. Um, that it just, just, I mean, it's incredible what they're doing. Uh, they're in Cincinnati. They get the Colorado Rockies there. Uh, five to four. Rockies had the lead on them early. Uh, but the Reds were able to go ahead and, and get that one across the finish line. For the Reds, they now take sole place of first place in the National League Central, and they extend that winning streak to nine games. Just been an awesome story. Mets 11-1 over the Astros. The Astros, they just continue to fall. Uh, They lose their fifth in a row, drop to third in the American League West, who before the year started had the Rangers and Angels ahead of the Astros, but that's where we stand Diamondbacks, best team in the National League West, 9-1 over the Brewers. I had that lean wrong. Thank God I didn't play it. Rangers, 5-2 over the White Sox uh, as they get it done against them. And then you had your San Diego Padres. Uh, They had the lead on the Giants, but gave it up. Giants beat them in 10 innings, 7-4. We got a whole slate in MLB. We'll get into that in a minute. Uh, Just going down through here. Uh, Tampa Bay holds the lead in the American League East over the Baltimore Orioles by five games. But some losing streaks. Rays have lost two in a row. Yankees have lost four in a row. Blue Jays have lost three in a row. Uh, Red Sox have won five in a row. Uh, Twins lead the Central by two games over the Indians. Twins have lost two in a row. Rangers, again, they're atop the American League West. They've been able to win three in a row. Astros and A's have lost five in a row. Today, you're going to have uh, the Atlanta Braves hook up with the Philadelphia Phillies. Both of them bring six-game win streaks into the matchup, so that'll be interesting. Uh, Marlins have won five in a row. Reds, they are atop the National League Central. Like we said, that nine-game win streak, they're a half game in front of Milwaukee. 
Pittsburgh has lost seven in a row. I told everybody Pittsburgh was going to come back to life. Oh, Pittsburgh. Oh, the Pirates. Yeah, they blow. They've blown since 92. Uh, Cardinals have won three in a row. The San Francisco Giants have won eight in a row, but they're still three and a half back of the D-backs. D-backs have just been playing incredible baseball, but the Giants, they just keep finding ways to win. Dodgers, four and a half games back. They've lost three in a row. And the Colorado Rockies sit last in the division. They have a six-game losing streak. Bob Huggins, in other news, Huggy Bear uh, is expected to step down. And look, guy didn't know where he was at, blah, 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 blah. I'm not, I mean, he deserves to be punished. But again, we just got to encapsulate this for what it is. A man in Bob Huggins develops young people for decades gives them opportunity, helps them through college, helps them next phase of life. Guy gets a DUI, which he should have been driving drunk. He could have killed somebody. He totally should be prosecuted against uh, by the law, and he totally should be disciplined by West Virginia and NCAA. I'm not denying that. But I just want you to think about the hypocrisy again. Bob Huggins is going to be forced to lose his job after decades of impacting people and helping young people get to the next level and grow into great husbands and all this and that. And John Morant gets 25 games. And he'll probably do less for good time so that he can be all NBA and get his back. Again, just the hypocrisy of the country we live in and the double standard that continues to exist blows my mind we're so quick to want to get rid of somebody for their job i just want to know when the guy at mcdonald's gets a dui do they fire him at mcdonald's i'm just asking for a friend just for a friend so again you take that for what it is but it's just a absolute ridiculousness uh and double standard bill to the suns we talked about that a little bit yesterday chris paul apparently found out on the plane hey sorry bro you couldn't get him across the finish line You know, I like Chris Paul a lot. He hadn't got it done. But the thing about this is, Chris Paul is saying it's because of Isaiah Thomas. Because Isaiah Thomas and the owner are friends. Look, I don't know this owner. He comes in, makes a big splash with Durant. All the more power to you. But having Isaiah Thomas give you any kind of advice, you might as well put five bullets in the chamber and play Russian roulette. Because Isaiah Thomas has destroyed every WNBA or NBA franchise he's been around since he stepped off the court. You know, people talk about Michael Jordan and how much of a failure he's been with the Wizards and the Hornets. He got the Wizards to the playoffs. If y'all forget, that team blew when he got there and they've blown ever since he's left. And he did that at like age 38 after taking a hiatus. Second of all, at least he got the name changed back to the Charlotte Hornets instead of that stupid Charlotte Bobcats thing that the city did for whatever unknown reason. Attendance is up. I saw something where he bought them for like $375 million and then sold them for like $2, 3000000000 billion, whatever it is. So obviously, from a business standpoint, he didn't do that bad. The Hornets have made the playoffs a couple times. Listen, if you look back at the teams that win titles, I mean, there's there's a lot of luck, but you got to think about it. Look at everything Boston's put in place. They haven't gotten it done. But look at the people that have won. The Spurs. Well, guess what? Popovich and how great that front office has been. They ain't did jack since Duncan Ginobili and them left. Miami, they're a great organization. Pat Riley runs them great, but they haven't won a title since LeBron. Cleveland, they wouldn't even be on the map if it wasn't for LeBron going back and winning a title or them drafting him. Orlando, the only success they had was early on with Dwight Howard. The Nuggets, they have a great team now, but they haven't been relevant in over a decade since it was Mello and Iverson. It was like 15 years ago. Look at the Lakers. Once Gasol and Kobe were done, when was the last time they were relevant? They had to wait till the bubble. So, this thing about it, Jordan was an epic failure as an owner, I'm not saying the guy did a bang-up job, but he made like 11 times his investment over, changed the name, attendance is up, they've drafted good, just some of the players they've drafted haven't worked out. 
But look, you're walking in there. You got LaMelo Ball. You got Bridges. I mean, it's not like they don't have pieces. So, you know, when you compare that to an Isaiah Thomas that destroyed the Knicks, Isaiah Thomas destroyed the Raptors. There was a WNBA franchise he was with. He screwed that up. He's been accused of sexual harassment 84,000 times. I mean, I wouldn't let Isaiah Thomas, he, he shouldn't even be allowed near anything that has to do with basketball. Look, you were great at Indiana and Detroit, but it stops there. Stops. So I'm just saying, if you're going to compare, you know, let's compare apples to apples here. But Beal to the Suns, yeah, Beal, Booker, Durant, that's great. Who's playing point guard? Who's coming off the bench? Like, that still doesn't make them better than Denver. Heck, I don't think it makes them better than L.A. I mean, I don't think they're better than the Lakers if Anthony Davis shows up. So the Suns are going to have to move some pieces around, but I hope to God in heaven that this owner isn't listening to Isaiah Thomas. I mean, I wouldn't listen to anything he has to say. Chris Paul, Lakers, Clippers, Celtics, Heat. Where's the best fit? He's with Clutch Sports. I would venture to say he ends up back with or not ends up back with, but he should have been with the Lakers long ago. The Clippers doesn't make any sense. I think the Clippers need to blow the whole thing up. You know, Boston makes the most sense. Does he really want to go to Boston? His family's in LA. I doubt it. Miami makes a lot of sense. Uh, but Miami seems pretty dead set on trying to figure out a way to bring Damian Lillard. Lillard, you know, 76ers or Heat seem to be the two best landing spots. But I tell you what. If you're the Milwaukee Bucks, I think you got to look hard at Chris Paul and Damian Lillard. Drew Holiday could play the two, right? I think you really got to look. I mean, you got Giannis. If you're the Bucks, you got to do something quick. Or Giannis is going to end up one out the door, right? So I think, you know, Chris Paul or Damian Lillard, look for the Bucks to get in on that. I think that makes a lot of sense. Going back to Charlotte, the number two pick, they've been rumored to to be in the business of trading that? Do they trade it for Zion? You know, does a new owner come in and say, hey, I want LaMelo and Zion. Maybe have a little, you know, uh, above the rim city there going on, dunk fest. I mean, they're not going to win any chips, but LaMelo and Zion will put bodies in seats, that's for sure. NBA draft Thursday, 8 o'clock. Wimbenyama, we know he's going number one. Draymond out, uh, declining his option in Golden State. Mike Dunleavy Jr., great hire for the new general manager. He's saying they absolutely want to have Draymond back. But look, there's a lot of stuff floating around out there about Draymond. Draymond to the Lakers, again, clutch sport. I mean, all these people want to tag LeBron. I I mean, I have all the respect in the world for LeBron, but what part of he's done don't people see? I mean, he's done. But Draymond, you know, look, Draymond in Boston, Draymond in Miami, you know, put him back with KD. That'd be hilarious. But it'll be interesting to see what happens with Draymond. I think the best fits the Warriors. But look, I think the Warriors got to figure out some things because Clay Thompson and Jordan Poole, they need to flip them for better pieces, in in my opinion. Uh, Blazers at number three, they've been rumored to try to trade out of that. They want to get help for Lillard. There was a rumor out there, Toronto, Siakam for the number three pick. I don't think that moves the needle with Portland. Again, Denver, the Lakers, Phoenix, Sacramento, and then there's an absolute huge drop-off to anybody else. Huge drop-off to anybody else. So it has got to make sense if you're going to go out there and mortgage. You know, if if I'm Portland, I get Lillard's talent. But look. I would flip that roster and just go young. I mean, look, it's working out for the Thunder. At some point in time, like uh, high-profile superstars are not going to Portland. Clyde Drexler got out of Portland. Y'all remember that? So, like, they're they're not going to Portland to play. So, if I'm Portland, I try to get young now while you have the time. Again, Lillard, I think the best fits Miami. Philly's been rumored. I think another great fit is boss or uh, Milwaukee. Rather, you have Lillard, Drew Holiday. Uh, you have some of those pieces, Jay Crowder, some goons to to clean up the boards and all that. But they got issues too with it. What's going to happen with Brooks Lopez? 
But Milwaukee, they got to get, they got to rebuild this thing around Giannis and rebuild it quick. Um, Odds to make the playoffs in the NFL. I found this very interesting uh, when I was poking around last night. And I was like, you know, let's let's look at, uh, you know, to make the playoffs. There was a thing. FanDuel had it. I'm going to look it up right now. So, you know, your, your usual suspects. This is just to make the playoffs. Up at the top, you got the Kansas City Chiefs minus 500. You can't lay that, though it's a sure thing. Uh, San Francisco minus 430. Philly minus 400. But I was like, okay, if you're going to make a bet, what makes sense? So if you're looking just to make the playoffs, right? The Detroit Lions minus dollar seven. I'll lay that. I'll lay that. I mean, I've already told you guys. I think it's either the Lions or the Vikings are in the NFC Championship game. That's just my opinion. Baltimore minus a dollar fifty. Look, you're telling me I got to lay a dollar fifty is all for the Ravens to make the playoffs? I mean, all this hype, we've already crowned them NFC North champions. I mean, I don't think they're going to win the division, but a wild card I absolutely think is in the cards. Wild card in the cards, see what I did there? The Jets, all you people want to pencil them over to the Super Bowl, minus $1.35. Minus $1.35 for the Jets to make the playoffs. Mike Greenberg's going to mortgage his house on that. Seattle. Look, I think Seattle could be a dark. If Geno can just somewhat keep it together, Seattle has a chance to actually sneak up and win that division because I know everybody's in love with San Francisco. I'm in love with San Francisco, but I am not sold on the quarterback situation. Unless Kyle Shanahan is 10 times better than what I think, he may be sold on Trey Lance and Brock Purdy. I'm not buying that steak. Looks a little, looks a little spoiled to me. I'm not buying that stake. So we'll see how that ends up. But Seattle minus 125, good value. The Chargers, Vegas is telling you, you put those two 12-year-old dummies, Staley and Kellen Moore, coaching a team that's elite, they're going to screw it up. Why do I say that? Minus $1.15. If the Chargers are so great, they're only minus 115 to make the playoffs. Miami, minus 105. Tua, if you stay healthy, I think the Dolphins are a shoe in I think they can make a run to win that division. Minus 105 to make the playoffs? Maybe that tickles your fancy. Cleveland, plus 105. Eh, I'll pass. Minnesota, plus 120. Sign me up. I do not understand why everybody's hopping off this Minnesota bandwagon and hopping on this Chicago Bear bandwagon. That just goes to show all you people out there are morons. If you think the Chicago Bears are going to finish ahead of the Minnesota Vikings, you're a crackhead. I don't know how else to say it. You're stupid. Minnesota plus 115 to make, or plus 120 rather to make the playoffs. As I'm looking here on FanDuel, great value. Giants, do you have any faith in them to get back to the playoffs? I don't. I mean, I think if you're rolling in with Daniel Jones, you're, you're stupid. Uh, plus 160, though. Carolina, I think they sneak and win that division. Plus 170. All right. All you lovers of the Bears, plus 175. Denver, plus 195 to make the playoffs. With Carolina, plus 170 to make the playoffs, uh, even though I think they win that division, you would actually be better off taking them plus 340 to win the division. So if you're going to bet Carolina plus 170 to make the playoffs, you got to think the South's probably only getting one. I would also bet Carolina to win the division plus 340. Uh, the Saints are the leader in the clubhouse plus 135 to win that division. I don't know why in God's name Atlanta is second at plus 230. That's just stupid. That's, I mean, that might be the dumbest thing ever. And all you Eagles lovers to win the division, minus 105 for the Philadelphia Eagles. So. Problem is, you got to wait like four months to get your money. But hey, in baseball today, 951, the Atlanta Braves face 952, the Philadelphia Phillies. Spencer Strider gets the call for the Braves. Ranger Suarez for the Phillies. Your over under is eight and a half, uh, juiced minus uh, 120 to the under. Braves with Strider minus 155 on the road. Suarez plus 130, as we said. Both of these teams carrying a six game. 
win streak in. Strider, 7-2 with a 4.12 ERA, 1.13 whip. Suarez, the Southpaw, 1-2 with a 3.82 ERA. Uh, the over is 4-0 and in Strider's last four starts versus the National League East. Um, the under, 4-0-1 in the Phillies' last five overall. Braves, 2-5 and five the last seven meetings uh, in Philadelphia, Philly brings the 14th ranked offense. Braves, the third ranked offense in Major League Baseball, comes in. Uh, in their last three, both pitchers, when they've pitched, their teams have won their last three starts. Strider, three and oh, five innings pitch, 1.73 ERA, a nine or 1.73 whip rather, nine ERA. Ranger Suarez, one and oh. Or three and oh, rather, he's one and oh, but his team's three and oh, six and two thirds, 1.05 whip, a 0.90 ERA is Ranger Suarez. Strider has won five of his last six and eight of his last 10 uh, starts. The Braves have won when he pitches. Uh, When he pitches against the Phillies, the Braves are four and one when Strider goes. Suarez, uh, so far this year, he came off the DL there. In uh, mid-May, when he pitches, the Phillies have won five of his seven starts. Against the Braves, he's won three out of his last four starts. I'm going to take the home dog. I think this should really be a minus, you know, maybe the Braves a slight favorite at 120. Minus 155 is too much. I'll lean the way of the Phillies. Again, plays come out uh, after 3 o'clock or 5 o'clock. Every day, East Coast time. If you'd like to get in on a package or sign up, I got something special right now uh, for the rest of the baseball season. If I don't win a certain amount, you'll get the football season for free. John at bccsports.com for all you new people signing up. Um, But yeah, my lean would definitely be the Phillies plus the 130. Uh, 975, again, you can email me, john at bccsports.com. 9-7-5, 9-7-5, the Toronto Blue Jays face 9-7-6, the Miami Marlins. Um, on this one, the Marlins minus 115, Blue Jays minus 105. Kakachi will go for the Blue Jays, 6-2 with a 4.31 ERA. Uh, 4-1 is Perez with a 1.80 ERA. Listen, uh, the Marlins, I think the Blue Jays are the better team, but Perez has pitched great. I'm not stepping in front of the Marlins. Uh, this game would be a no play for me where it stands. Uh, another no play, 9-6-5, the Kansas City Royals versus nine six six the Detroit Tigers. Uh, the Southpaw, Daniel Lynch, will get the call for the Kansas City Royals. Michael Lorenzen will get the call for the Tigers. Tigers minus 155, comeback plus 130 on the Royals. Uh, Lynch, 0-3 with a 5.79 ERA, 1.41 whip, averaging about four and two-thirds innings pitched. Lorenzen, two and four with a 4.23 ERA. Your over under sets at eight and a half. Juice minus 115 to the over. Royals, 0 and four the last four in Detroit. One and six the last seven meetings overall. Again, I'll take a pass on this one. Uh, don't want to get into bed with either one of these teams whatsoever. 9 6 3, the Baltimore Orioles. They'll face 9 6 4, the Tampa Bay Rays. Uh, the Rays will have uh, Tyler Glass now laying a dollar ninety. Kyle Bradish plus one sixty on the comeback. Uh, I think that line's way too high. Glass now two and zero with a three point four three, but Bradish two and three with a three point nine zero ERA. Your over under sets at eight flat. Juice minus one fifteen to the under. Orioles twelve and thirty nine the last fifty one in Tampa. 16 and 36, the last 52 meetings overall. Uh, Henderson, he's sick uh, with an illness. He's questionable for today. Lowe is still going to be out till mid July, the second baseman for the Rays. Second rank offense for the Rays, number one ranked defense. Orioles, number nine ranked offense, number 13th ranked defense. Over the last three starts, uh, Brad is 3.94 ERA. Glass now 2.70 ERA. Uh, Bradish, about every other start, he wins or loses. Uh, and against the Royals, he's 0-2. Look, I just don't want to lay that big of a price with the Rays. I'm not saying I would take the Orioles, but gun to my head, I'll take the plus 160 with the Orioles would be my lean, but that's just not going to be a bet for me today. 9-6-7, the Seattle Mariners face the horrible New York Yankees. 
And I just want to say this about the Yankees. When are they going to fire Cashman and Boone? I mean, these guys have like more lives than freaking Freddie Krueger. Aaron Boone hit a walk-off Game 7 ALCS homer against your rival. Other than that, he sucked. He sucked. Brian Cashman, look, when the old man Steinbrenner was around, that's when you ate and got fat off of it. Since then, you ain't did jack. You suck. They got to get rid of those guys. I mean, they they just got to get rid of them. I mean, they're horrible. Terrible, as Charles Barkley would say. Yankees, minus 135, plus 115 on the comeback for the Mariners. Garrett Cole, 7-1 with a 2.75 ERA, gets the call for the Yankees. Kirby, 6-5 with a 3.24 for the Mariners. Your over-under, 7, juiced, minus 115 to the over, or to the under, rather. The under, 3-0-1 in the Mariners' last four games overall. Uh, The Yankees, again, we said they've lost four in a row. Mariners, 15-36 the last 51 meetings. 4-12 4-12 and 12 the last 16 times these teams have hooked up in New York. The New York Yankees, uh, again, Judge still out of the lineup. 17th ranked offense. Mariners have the 19th ranked offense in Major League Baseball. Over the last three starts uh, for these pitchers, when Kirby goes, the Mariners are 2-1. and one. When Cole goes, the Yankees are 1-2. and two. Kirby, .96 whip, 2.55 ERA. Cole, uh, one flat whip with a two flat ERA. Kirby, uh, when he goes, the Mariners have lost three of his last five starts. He did pitch May 31st against the Yankees. Eight innings pitched, three hits, zero earned runs. Cole, when he's pitched his last two starts, they've lost. His last two against the Mariners, they've lost. That's after winning four in a row. Um, But over his last 10 starts against the Mariners, Cole was five and five. I do think the Yankees break the streak today. They are the lean minus 135. So right now, uh, two leans, two pretty good leans in the Phillies at plus money and the Yankees as the short favorite. Next on the docket, 953, the Chicago Cubs will battle the Pittsburgh Pirates, 954. Marcus Stroman will get the call against Johan Avedo. Stroman and the Cubs laying $1.26, comeback plus 110 on the struggling, lost seven in a row, Pittsburgh Pirates. Stroman, 8 and 4 with a 2.45 ERA. Ovedo, 3 and 6 with a 4.40. Your over under is set at 8.5, juiced minus 130 uh, to the under. Cubs, 4 and 1 the last 5 uh, in Pittsburgh, 5 and 0 oh against the Pirates overall in the last 5 meetings. Cubs up to the 13th ranked offense. That Pirate offense that was top 10 has slid back to number 20 in baseball. Over their last three starts, Stroman has a 1.93 ERA. Ovedo, a 4.08 ERA. Look, uh, Stroman, when he goes, the Cubs have won his last six starts. Against the Pirates, uh, they've lost three of his last five starts. But Ovedo's been no bargain. When he pitches, the Pirates have lost seven of his last ten. The line's short here. They're begging you to take the Cubs. I can't step in front of Stroman. But actually... For no statistical reason, just a gut, if I had to play the game, I would take the Pirates. But I have absolutely no conviction of doing it, and I have no reason for it. Just a gut feeling. All right? I think that line should be way higher. The comeback Cardinals, 955, faces the uh, Washington Nationals, 956. Montgomery for the Cardinals to get the call, laying $1.55, plus 130 on the comeback for the Nats with McKenzie Gore. Again, uh, Cardinals came back and won for us yesterday. This game goes off 7.05 Eastern time. Montgomery 3.3-7 with a 3.91 ERA, 1.34 whip. McKenzie Gore 3-5 with a 3.74 ERA, 1.38 whip. I'll take a pass, though I do, you know, the Cardinals, man, you look at those buzzards and you just wonder. I mean, they're just so erratic. It's crazy. Uh, you know, I felt like playing Russian roulette betting them yesterday, but, um, you know, I, I can't play the Cardinals two days in a row. Mackenzie Gore's pitched well. That's just not something I want to get into. 969, the Oakland A's versus 970, the Cleveland Indians. Indians will send uh, Aaron Savale to the bump, minus 230. Uh, Luis Medina will get the call for the A's plus 190. Line's too high. Uh, I want no parts. The Guardians can't score. The A's got just came off of a little bit of a heater. 
Uh, you know, I'll, I'll pass on that. Nine five seven, the Colorado Rockies at nine five eight, the Cincinnati Reds. Noah Davis will get the call for the Rockies. Uh, well, one site I have Noah Davis, the other one Kyle Freeland. So I have absolutely no idea. Again, Lively will go for the Reds. Lively four and four with a four point oh seven ERA. Uh, Reds right now are showing uh, minus two dollars plus one seventy for the Reds. Uh, I mean. Rockies one and eight the last nine in Cincinnati. You can't step in front of the Reds right now. Again, the Reds are red hot. Doom doom. Uh, so I'll take a pass on that. Uh, Minnesota Twinkies. Uh, Bailey Ober will get the call minus one forty two. Uh, Cutter Crawford plus one twenty on the comeback for the Red Sox. This one goes off seven forty Eastern time. Crawford, 1-3 and three with a 4.20 ERA, 1.13 whip, averaging about three innings per. Bailey over 4-3 and three with a 2.65 ERA, 0.99 whip. Uh, I lean the Twinkies here to get off their little bit of a losing streak. They've lost two in a row. I like the Twinkies here laying $1.40. Uh, we'll see how that line moves throughout the day. Arizona D-backs red hot. Visiting the Milwaukee Brewers, 9-5-9, and the rotation is the D-backs. 960 is the Milwaukee Brewers. This one goes off 810 Eastern Time. Ryan Nelson will get the call for the D backs. Colin Ray will get the ball for the Brewers. Brewers lay them minus 118. Even money coming back with uh, Nelson and the Diamondbacks. Diamondbacks beat them up pretty good yesterday. Nelson 3 and 4 uh, with a 5.30A. Rhea 3 and 4 with a 4.71 ERA. Again, Brewers just like the Cardinals. So erratic. Diamondbacks playing really good baseball. How the Diamondbacks can be a dog here is I got no clue. Um, so that that's where we stand on that one. Twenty one and eleven are the D backs on the road. That's incredible. Twenty one and eleven on the road, and the Brewers are twenty one and seventeen at home. So uh, it just want no parts of that one. Nine seven nine seven seven New York Mets versus nine seven eight Houston Astros. This is the game of the day. Not because it's the Mets, but because Justin Verlander is going back to pitch in Houston. Uh, and you got just a heck of a pitching matchup here. Framer Valdez, who's been absolutely incredible for the Astros. The Southpaw gets the ball. Verlander gets the call for the Mets. Mets come into this one 34 and 38, 17 and 23 on the road. Astros 39, 34, 20 and 19 at home. Mets destroyed him yesterday, 11 nothing. Verlander comes in 2-3 and three with a 4.40 ERA, 1.22 whip, 6-5 and five with a 2.27 ERA. It's Framer Valdez. Valdez laying 146, comeback plus 125 on the Mets. I know everybody's betting on the Astros to end this slump of five in a row, but that line's too high. Um, for me... I mean, it's a no play, but if I had to take the game, I'd take the, the Mets. But you can't you can't have a team win 11 nothing the day before. The Astros have been playing horrible and think, oh, they got their best pitcher. That means they're going to win. Like, j- the ace doesn't win every start. I'm not saying the Astros aren't going to win. I'm just saying there's no way I'm laying $1.46, $1.50 with a team that's lost five freaking games in a row and can't score since Alvarez is out of the lineup. That's all I'm saying. Texas Rangers, 973 will visit the Chicago White Sox, 974. Another great pitching matchup here. Nathan Avalde will get the call for the Texas Rangers, uh, laying $1.35. Comeback plus 115 with Dylan Cease and the Chicago White Sox. Avalde, 9 and 3 with a 259 ERA, 0.98 whip, 6 and 2 thirds innings pitch. Avalde's been absolutely electric. Uh, sees three and three with a 4.31 ERA, 1.34 whip. Uh, he's averaging five and a third innings pitch. Your over under sets at eight and a half juice minus 115 to the under. Uh, the Rangers five and oh in Avaldi's last five road starts. The under three oh and two in the White Sox last five overall. Rangers 10 and 25 the last 35 in Chicago, five and two the last seven meetings overall. Against these teams, Anderson, the shortstop for the White Sox, he's still battling that shoulder injury, so he's questionable today. Rangers, number one ranked offense in Major League Baseball, number five ranked defense in Major League Baseball. White Sox, 25th in defense, 24 in offense. Uh, if you look over their last three starts, both pitchers, when they go, their teams are two and one. 
Avalde, 0.93 whip, 3.26 ERA. Cease, 1.08 whip, 2.16 ERA. Again, with these pitchers flip a quarter, I think it's going to be a great pitching matchup. Um, I don't want to step in front of Texas, uh, but this is going to be a good one. No lean in this one. I could be sold either way. I guess if I had to take it, I would take the White Sox at plus money at home. But look, not not enough to bet this thing. I don't want any parts betting. Next, San Diego Padres for San Francisco Giants. We see if the Giants can keep running this win streak up. Seth Lugo comes back off the DL 3-3 three and three with a 4.10 ERA. Uh, Disco Anthony Disconfani will go with the Giants 4-6 and six with a 4.31 ERA. Uh, the Padres uh, and the Giants, when they hook up, Padres 9-2 and two now, the last 11. 6-1 and one the last seven in San Francisco. Uh, the Giants, again, they've just been, it's been a smoke show with them lately, man. They've just been hitting the cover off of it. But Descanfani in his last three starts has a nine ERA uh, and hasn't gotten past four innings. The problem is, is the Padres bullpen is so God awful that, you know, Lugo's only, I mean, first start off the DL, he's not a long extent pitcher. So, you know, Lugo's probably going to go four innings himself. So the whole problem with this is the Padres' bullpen blows. All right, they they just blow. But uh, the Giants, uh, it's actually flipped now. Last night the Giants were minus one fifteen early in the morning hour. Now the Padres are minus one fifteen. Uh, I mean, how the Giants can be the dog on a losing stri- or on a winning streak like they are is beyond me. That's just beyond me. Dodgers they got a little bit of a losing streak nine seven nine. Uh, against the Los Angeles Angels, 980. Clayton Kershaw will get the call for the Dodgers. Reed Detmers will get the call for the Angels. Dodgers have been playing great baseball. Angels, not so much. Dodgers laying 148, comeback plus 130 for the Angels. Uh, I will lean Dodgers in this one. So my leans for today, uh, again, plays be official after 3 o'clock. You can email me, john, at bccsports.com. Uh, if you'd like to get in, but I got to lean on the Dodgers, lean on the Yankees, uh, lean on the Philadelphia Phillies. And for no reason, no God right reason at all, uh, I am interested and curious about the Pirates and the Mets. But hey, you know, so goes life. Look, hope you have a great Tuesday. Remember, there's only one person in your life that can get it done. Bad stuff happens every day. You're either a winner or a loser, right? And sometimes if you didn't win that day, well, it doesn't mean you lose. You're just learning. As long as you're learning, you know, Calipari had a great quote. We're either winning or we're learning. But if you're not learning anything and you just keep sitting around waiting for something good to happen, folks, you need to wake up. You're losing, right? It's the same thing gambling. You think you're going to win each and every day. You're full of yourself. You're fooling yourself. I mean, I get it all the time. You know, I'll give somebody three winners in a row, then I lose two, and all you're the worst guy in the world. Look, baseball is a grind. I don't know how else to tell you. We have now lost 20 games flat for 49.84 units with the league going into the ninth inning. What am I going to do? Set and cry? No. I'm still going to finish 150 games, 150 units over before it's all said and done. How am I going to do it? I don't know, but I know I got the second half of baseball, college football, NFL football. NBA regular season, hockey regular season, and college basketball, and March Madness to do it again. So, and I had a horrible hockey regular season and playoffs, and I had a horrible March Madness. So that means it's just going to be great. All right, football's been my bread and butter. You people that hopped on in October, November, December, don't lie to yourselves. You know what happened. We kicked butt, took names. So look, not every day you're going to wake up and everything be rainbows and unicorns. You're going to have to go through some stuff to get something in life, okay? But the deal is, do you keep pressing on? The same thing in in sports betting. You can make a lot of money at, but not if you're looking for an overnight, one-night wonder, because they don't happen. Yeah, you might catch somebody on a heater. You may catch me on a heater. But look, what goes up, I always say this, must come down. So look, stay steady in your life. Stay grounded. Stay focused on your goals. Don't let things distract you that have nothing to do with your goals. They have nothing to do at all with it. I saw a nice little cartoon picture. It had some like hot chick in a dress, right? And the guy was like looking out the car window. 
And ahead of the car window was this sign, your goals in life. And then by the girl was don't get distracted by things that have nothing to do with your goal. And it really hit me. I was like, oh, you know what I mean? That's, that's good stuff. Or, oh, I lost a game or all oh, this or that. Look, I had my daughter at Six Flags this weekend. And there's this boy in one of those motorized vehicles that has like the headrest. And the dad has to pick him up and hold his head gently and put him in the teacups and like hold him just so his son could ride a ride. So you think it's bad because we've only made like two, three units in the baseball season. You act like we lost 50. All right. So shut up, relax and remember what the goal is and stop living in the moment. Everybody that lives in the moment ends up being extremely disappointed later on. Okay. doesn't mean you don't enjoy walking down the fairway and smelling the roses, right? But the end goal is the ultimate goal. So don't let things that have nothing to do with your goal distract you and be grateful and thankful. Because when I saw that dad, just so his son could experience a ride, right? And his dad almost in tears, it jarred me because it was like, man, I think it's bad or I think I'm having a bad day. At least my kids are healthy. What does that poor man have to, and what about that child that's never going to get to experience all the things my child does? So we need to be a little bit more grateful and a little bit more grounded and not let all these other little things that don't matter get in our way. I love you, my winners. Have a great Tuesday. Again, Bet Online uh, is your number one sports source for all your gambling needs. Head over to the website today. Uh, get the latest odds, lines, and matchups, reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live bang in your favorite casino and card games, right from the comfort of your own home. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use the promo code BLEAV. That's capital B, capital E, L, E, A, V. BLEAV for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. Let's have a great Tuesday and pick up some winners. Love you.